If you hood educated, I'm glad you made it. Allow me to unfold my knowledge, wisdom, and understanding from a hood brother's point of view to all of you here, there, and everywhere. Now check me out. Man, they don't release photos. I'm talking about, and it's not looking good at all. And what I would like to do with y'all, I would like to examine this photo. Um, I'm talking about y'all, like when y'all see, and when we break this demonstration down, it's gonna leave y'all with more questions than answers. But we gotta break it down like that, just so that we can get some type of understanding as to what went down when Julio Fulio was killed. Now, as you can see in this photo right here, you see a black car. That's Julio Fulio's vehicle. You see a man standing there. That right there is the killer. And as you can see, this man right here is positioning himself. I'm talking about like almost to perfection. Like this man right here, you can tell this is not his first time uh, using a weapon like this. I'm talking about the way that he's positioned. It almost looked police-like. Just keeping it 100. He almost looked like he wanted them Navy SEALs or, or some type of law enforcement or something. The way that this man is positioned with this gun. Cold-blooded demonstration. Now, as you can see that he walks clean up. I'm talking about, do you see how close he is to the vehicle? He is so close to Julio Fulio vehicle that if he wanted to, he could have opened the door. Man. So now, here it is, right? This man right here is on the passenger side, as you can see. He's on the passenger side of the vehicle. Guess where Julio Fulio is sitting? Yeah. On the passenger side. And as you can see by how this man is positioned and how this man is aiming, he is aiming directly at Julio Fulio. Now, I need y'all to pay close attention to the, I mean, to the picture. If you notice and you pay close attention, you will see that the car, whoever it is driving that car, they got their foot on the brake. The brake lights are on. And so when I seen that, I said, oh my God. I know they ain't doing like that. I mean, it's, is it that cold blooded that I'm talking about? They got the brake lights on. I'm talking about they stopped the car so that this man can run up and do Julio Fulio in. Is it that serious? I do not want to believe that it's that serious, y'all. I don't. I would like to believe in my mind the reason why the brake light is on is because once they seen this guy running up with this gun or walking up because it don't look like he was in a running position. He's standing there. It almost is, it look, it almost appears as if they pulled up, stopped while he was sitting there waiting for them already. And then up this gun and just start shooting inside the car. It don't look like he's in a running position or he's leaning or anything like that. You know, this man, it appears that they pulled up and this man was just sitting right there waiting. As soon as they pulled up and stopped, he started gunning the car. That's what it appears like. But as you can see, the brake light is on. While, his, while he got the gun aimed at them, the brake light is on. I'm talking about, man... I hope that it wasn't that serious that, you know, that they stopped the car and let this man get down on Julio Fulio like that. I would want and I would like to believe in my mind that when the brake light went on, that's because they was trying to put the car in drive and they was trying to get up out of there because they seen him with the firearm coming towards the vehicle. But then it makes me question. If that was the case, then how did this happen? How did he get in front of the vehicle and do all that damage? If they was trying to get away. 
if they put their foot on the brake just to take the car out of park and put it in drive, they could at least try to run him over or, or something. You know what I mean? How did he get to do all that damage? Do y'all see all those shots? How did he get to do all that damage? I'd see those are the things that make you go, hmm, uh, something just don't sound right. Something just don't seem right. I mean, y'all mean to tell me that this man right here just walked clean up? Or did he? Like I say, it looks like they pulled up and dude was just standing right there and just got to getting down on him. Now, there's one thing that I do want to clear up, right? Because we hood educated, we not lame related, but not only that, we have integrity. And if we get something wrong, it is our job and our duty to correct the wrong. Now, what I'm showing y'all right now is an overhead, a, a overhead photo of the hotel that Julio Fulio was at. And as you can see where that Bing sign is at, that is where Julio Fulio car was and that's where the shooting began right there. Now, as you go all the way down, as you can see, follow, follow the red line. As you go all the way down, you see there, that's where the hotel in, um, not, excuse me, the Holiday Inn gets into play, right? Because that's the stop sign. You see what I'm saying? Now, if you look close, the only way that Julio Fulio or whoever was driving that vehicle could have gotten to that stop sign they would have had to go over the curb, possibly crashed into a car if a car was parked right there. Because as you can see, they had to go through the grass. And as you can see, it's a car parked there now, but we don't know if a car was parked there that night. But they had to go through the grass in order to even get to the stop sign. So I believe now with this new evidence, I believe that that's how the tire and that's how the accident possibly happened. Because once the shooting happened, they had to get up out of there. That was their only escape route. They couldn't back up and do all that old type of stuff. They panicking. Julio shot. The driver possibly shot. And so he had to hit it. And when he hit it, he like, man, I'm not finna be turning around and all that. He went over the curb, probably hit a car, going through that grass. A car was possibly parked right there. And then, you know, he couldn't go no more and he had to stop at the stop sign. And that's possibly him who jumped out the car and ran into the Holiday Inn and told them to call the police and was seeking their help. Now, allow me to say this right here. This is just how it go when you're doing this blogging or when you're doing any type of news, anything like that. When the, when the evidence presents itself, you got to go with the evidence. So that's what I'm rolling with right now. I'm rolling with that. I believe that the escape route caused the damage to Julio Fulio's uh, vehicle and what caused him or what indented his tire the way that it was. Look, I, in my own mind, right, I believe that Julio Fulio was back dope. Um... I don't know who backdoored him, but it had to be somebody close to him in order to backdoor him. So if I'm talking about in the two people that are looking real suspect to everybody is his homeboy Mizzle and now his homeboy Kenny Cap. Now, I know a lot of y'all probably saying like, no, nah, you know, Mizzle probably wouldn't, Kenny Cap probably wouldn't, and y'all could be right. And I'm not, I'm not saying that they did either, but what I am saying is that it just looks suspicious. And here's why it looks suspicious to me. Um, the brother Julio Fulio, he had it in his mind and he understood that there were some people in his circle that was messing with ATK. Not only that, he even said it himself that he felt like his life would be taken because he was loyal to the wrong people. Check it out. April 15th, 2019. Fulio left this post on Facebook. My heart might get me killed. I'm too loyal 
to the wrong people. I want them killed, I need all them niggas out the way. It's a snake inside my grass fucking with ATK. You see what I'm saying? So he already seen it before it even happened. Cold blooded demonstration. But see now, here's the thing that kind of blow my mind. Um, this brother right here has clear cut proof that his homeboy Mizzle is kicking it with Backstreet TK. I'm talking about like he has proof. He has evident proof. There's pictures and everything of this man socializing with somebody that wants to see him dead. And for some reason, some reason, he felt comfortable bringing this man to the Airbnb and having this man celebrate his birthday with him. I don't understand it. I'm talking about not for the life of me. I don't understand it. Got my brother with me. He done popped out for me for my birthday. He done tired of it. Double it. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> And, and not only that, though, but his homeboy, Kenny Cap. Now, this right here really blows my mind because here it is. Kenny Cap lets it be known that he talks to Young and Ace. And I'm talking about he says this in front, not behind his back. He says this in front of Julio Fulio that he talks to Young and Ace all the time. And they politic. Check it out. That's saying what it is. Like, like it's cool to go to school. It's cool to, you know what I'm saying, graduate. It's cool to not be in the, go get a job, nine to five. Like, nigga trying to just switch the narrative a little bit. But, you know, it's going to come with politics and all that other shit. But it is what it is. You think it could ever be to the point where you and Young and Ace sit down and do something? I talk to Ace. You can answer that for. I talked to Ace. I talked to Ace like a week ago. Or you knew him? Like I actually had like a rapport. He's all right. I don't really know him, but like, you know, you know, dummy, you know, got something to think with. So we, you know, we talk. We talk. We don't talk about, you know, we don't talk about crazy shit. Like we don't. Yeah. Oh fuck your nigga, fuck your dog, fuck dog, none of that shit. You like you feel me? We gotta understand with each other, so. We are uh, rap on some political shit. So then, with that being said, since you was able to patch up the, the K Shorty thing, you think you could be the the bridge for him and Young and Ace to for everybody to come together maybe one day? Some bridge has been burnt. So it's, uh, though you got it. Yeah. Oh, nigga, look. drowning in this bitch yeah. already. <laughs> that bridge uh, is the that London bridge. Even swim. Yeah. But like I say, cuz bro, like we all like one thing I said, we all men too, like bro, like. Bro, like might might not be on the type of time when I when I come on. Bro, like might talk to him. If he got he got certain people in his camp, I won't talk to. I talk to Ace. You feel me? He's straight. I, I we can we can mind route certain people. Like he talks, I won't talk to. But you feel me? Like I said, Ace the one I I politically rap with him about certain shit. We we'll talk, have conversations. Talk to him like like I said like a week ago. He will call him. I call him. Now. As y'all can see, I mean, he made it known that, hey, look, I'm talking to Young and Ace. And, and Young and Ace wants to see Julio Fulio dead. Backstreet TK. I'm talking about Julio Fulio, dog them, disrespect them. I'm talking about, man, to the worst. They don't like him. Those are his ops. So he got two friends that he considered to be friends socializing with people that want to see him dead. I don't understand it. And then the brother, uh, Kenny Cap, he says that he's politicking. Now, from a hood perspective, when you hear somebody saying, you know, especially when they talking to ops and they say, what's going on? We politicking. That really means that they are socializing on the level of peace. And that's why they say, you know, hey, man, we politicking. What do politicians do? Politicians try to solve problems. So from a gang standpoint, you know, when it's, hey, look, who you talking to? Hey, I'm on the phone with old boy and then we politicking. Y'all trying to settle the beef. Y'all trying to establish a peace treaty. 
And I believe somewhere down the line, because you know what? As a matter of fact, he did say that they was trying to get something together. He did say that they was trying to come together on another platform. Check it out. You said you was you be talking to Young and Ace on the phone. Yeah, 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 yeah. Man, bro, what like y'all be talking about, bro? Politicking, you feel me, bro? Bro, I said, bro, got a great mind, you feel me? Like, like trying to bring that shit together. Or? Yeah, most likely, yeah. Like certain shit, certain conversations, certain topics, you feel me? Like, like I said, bro, got a great mind, you feel me? I ain't gonna lie, he didn't give me advice on music and shit. Cause like I said, bro, like I want, I be lying, and I said, bro, wasn't no, no authentic nigga, bro, 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 real nigga, so. Real nigga, like, real recognize real, so I probably, like, other niggas, I don't want to can they'll get a conversation out of me, but, bro, I can rock with bro. Man, bro can politic. Like, he one of them niggas from over there I can talk to, you feel me? Because he, he ain't no dumb. He got something to think with. For you know sure. I got something to think with, you feel me? So, for sure, for sure. Now, if y'all want to see that entire interview, I'm going to leave the link, not in the comment section, but I'm going to leave the link in the detail section. Go over there, hit that link so y'all can check out the video and y'all subscribe to them brothers' channel if y'all like what y'all see. Now, y'all hear what he just said? The man said, yeah, you know, I'm talking to him. He trying to get this shit together. Now, when I hear that and now with everything that done went down, it makes me think that Young and Ace is a low down. Man, look, Young and Ace... Rock them boys to sleep. I'm talking about man, Young and Ace rock them boys to sleep because here it is. They he must have told them that hey, look, yeah, it's a peace treaty, man. We ain't tripping on nothing like that because they running around the city. It look like with no guns. They running around the city acting like hey, it's peace and ain't no problems or none of that. And then next thing you know, Julio Fulio is dead, and Young and Ace is making diss records. So what type of politicking was y'all doing, Kenny Cap? What type of politic was going on? Did he rock you to sleep, brother? And by him rocking you to sleep, you end up rocking your homeboy to sleep, telling him, hey, man, come to Tampa. It's cool. We ain't got nothing to worry about. I've been, you know, politicking with him. We got a peace treaty going on. We ain't got to worry about nothing. We straight. Because... For you to be on the phone with him and then your homeboy end up dead and now this man is making diss records, two of them, after your homeboy's death. If there was any politicking for peace, you would think that he would have said, you know what, hey, look, we were trying to get things together. We, you know, I ain't with all that. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm not finna disrespect him like that because we were trying to establish peace. But instead, he go the other route. But not only that, y'all, this is the cold-blooded part of all of it. This man right here alone was living. I'm talking about, I'm talking about, man, look, Julio Fulio, when he was by himself, he was, man, had his guns. You know, they was trying to kill him or whatever, but he was still alive. The night that he decided to hang with Mizzle, the man that's connected with Backstreet, the night he decide to hang with Kenny Cap, the man that's socializing with Young and Ace, he end up dead. Look, I'm not accusing nobody of nothing. I'm just saying, like, that's like, it just don't sound right. It don't sound right. Like now he end up dead. Now, I mean, somebody walk up to the car as if they got great detail to know that ain't no guns in the car. Nothing, bro. You just walk right on up and spray the whole car down. Ain't nothing up in there. We ain't got no guns. We ain't got nothing. I would like to believe in my mind that, I mean, coming from a gang banger's perspective, um, we see somebody walking up on the car with a rifle and they ain't the police or nothing like that. Uh, it, we got to get busy. This person right here is coming to do us some type of harm. We got to get busy. I'm talking about we shooting all out the car. I'm talking about shooting through the window, whatever. It's going to be a shootout. We got to get this guy up off us. And then for this man to feel so comfortable to walk up on a car full of gangbangers without believing that he would be outgunned because he got one rifle 
And these, you know, these guys running around now with two, three hundred rounds in the car. He's outgunned. But for him to walk up so comfortably, I'm talking about so close, like I said, he could have opened the door if he wanted to and just sprayed the car down like that. It lets me know, man, that I'm talking about like he's way too comfortable and he's like, okay, I got this. This is nothing. I'm not worried about nothing. And the cold-blooded part about it, Julio done lost his life. Possibly for being loyal to some people that's not even loyal to him. Sometimes you got to listen when you feel it. Sometimes when your mind tell you stuff, when your intuition tell you stuff, sometimes you got to listen, especially if there's indicators there. And not only that, especially when it comes to this war type stuff like this, you got to trust your judgment better than other people. Because ain't no way, bro. I'm talking about me? Man, ain't no way. If I'm dealing with somebody and they talking on the phone with my ops, the people that's talking about killing me, they want to kill me, our, our friendship over with. What you talking to them for? I mean, unless, let me be 100, unless it's some peace treaty type stuff, you know what I'm saying? Because that happens there. That happens in war. You know, you got to sit down sometimes and talk peace treaty. So, yeah, you can do that. But at the same time, I understand it's a peace treaty, but I ain't leaving my peace. Nah, I ain't leaving that right there. That thing going to be on me just like it's the war because I know how war games is played. I know how the back door happened. I know how people will rock you clean and sleep just to kill you. This is the streets that we talking about. And the cold blooded part about everything, Julio Fulio might have lost his life for being loyal to some people that are not loyal to him. Cold blooded demonstration, but these are the ways of the street. It's cut though. Ain't no real morals. Ain't no real loyalty. This is just how things go. Now we have Julio is dead. Mizzle still alive. And here it is we have Kenny Cap, who is still alive. But not only that, talking to the police. Check it out. Now, I don't know what he's saying to the police, but one thing I do know is when you talking to the police and they got that pad out, uh, they writing down information. You know, I don't know what kind of information. I'm not going to put that on that young brother. But at the same time, when you talking to the police and they got that pad out and that pen, yeah, they getting the information. So, I mean, like I say, I, I don't know what type of information he was telling them. But he was talking to him, as y'all can see, clear as day he was talking to him. Allow me to say this right here before I depart. This right here is a big mess. Because here it is, this man right here is dead. Um, he possibly done did the same thing to other people. And I'm talking about all them young brothers that was down there. All of them. I'm talking about all the ones that they naming in the rap songs. All those deaths. All those dead people. All the people that are in prison right now doing life. And I'm talking about if not doing life, they doing a large amount of time in prison. For nothing. For nothing. All that death. All that wasted time in the penitentiary for nothing. Because now that they are maturing, they starting to understand, man, we were tripping. 
But for those who made the ultimate sacrifice, they can't come back from the dead. It's over with. And those that are sitting in the penitentiary, they can't come back when they got that life sentence. It's over with. So what I'm trying to tell you young brothers right now today that I'm talking about that engage in this type of activity and really believe in it. I'm talking about you really believe that, hey, man, these my homeboys. We're going to, bro, y'all wasting y'all life. Just look at the people that came before y'all and that shit tell y'all. Look at them right now. I'm talking about, man, they like, this is not it. This is not the life. Even though Young and Ace all on it because he had to get his get back for his little brother. So that's why he all, you know, and then he's benefited from it. It's all about money with him right now. And, you know, his get back. You see what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, you see he ain't in Jacksonville. Hmm. You see he ain't putting his life on the line no more like that. I mean, and and which is smart though. It's it's an intelligent move. Once he realized that, wait a minute, hold on, I can I can die, or I can end up going to jail. I can't raise my kids. Let, let, let me get up out of here. Intelligent move. I mean, but everything that's going on with this video and all that, that right there is stupid. But as far as him moving and getting away from that, intelligent. But that should tell you. If he's getting away from it, even though he's talking about it, if he's moving away from it, why would you stay in it? Learn. Learn from him. Look at him. Successful. If he's moving away from it, why are you staying in it? Why are you finna sacrifice your life for it? It don't make no sense. Change your mind and change your life. It's hard to see that you do have a future that's better than going to jail or sitting in somebody's graveyard. This is Hood Educated, not Lane Related. Peace and love and y'all take care of yourself out there. If I said anything that caused you to think, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. And if you're feeling generous, please make a small donation to the channel. Now, before I depart, allow me to give a shout out to some of the blessings that I received this week. Allow me to give a shout out to Eric for the $5 cash app. Thank you. Uh, Robert Smith for the $5 cash app. Thank you. The Brother Hub for the $10 cash app. Thank you, brother. I really appreciate that. Uh, James Lee for the $1 cash app. Thank you. I really appreciate that, James. My homeboy, Farmer Phil for the $15 cash app. Thank you, brother. I really appreciate that. And last but not least, Barry Davis for the $10 cash app. This is Hood Educated, not Lane Related. Peace and love. And y'all take care of yourself out there.